In traditional film photography, ISO was the measure of how sensitive your film was to light. It was also called ASA or film speed and was represented as a number like 200 or 400 or 800 and so on. A high number meant that your film was very sensitive to light at the expense of larger film grain in the images. A low ISO meant that your film was less sensitive to light and the images would have finer grain. In digital photography, ISO simply just measures the sensitivity of the image sensor to light. As mentioned before in the previous lesson, on a very basic level, a camera works by letting light through a hole that is in the lens onto a light-sensitive medium called a sensor. This sensor is digital and absorbs the light, then it captures the image. ISO or ISO stands for the International Organization for Standardization. The organization combined many classifications of film sensitivity into one system that was uniform. Now don't get confused because the International Organization for Standardization standardizes sensitivity ratings for camera sensors, but this is also amongst many other things. So how does ISO affect your image? Well, in simple terms, if you're shooting outside in daylight, you almost never need to raise the ISO sensitivity because there is a lot of light available, hence there's no need to make your sensor more sensitive to light when it's already getting more than enough of it. Take this picture for example. This is shot at a certain aperture and shutter speed, which we'll cover in later lessons, but it's not important for this demonstration. The ISO is set to 200. In the second image, I made sure the zoom, aperture and shutter speed were kept constant with only the ISO changing. This is shot at ISO 3200. The effect of changing the ISO is obvious. In the second picture, the sensor is more sensitive to light and therefore absorbs more of it, creating a much brighter image. But notice that the image is also a lot more grainier. In digital photography, the amount of light hitting the image sensor per unit area when an image is captured is called exposure. It is affected by the ISO, shutter speed and aperture. Again, we'll cover shutter speed and aperture in the next few lessons. To capture a good image, you need to have the right exposure or capture the right amount of light. Where ISO becomes very useful is in low light situations. Because it is dark, taking a picture with a low ISO will yield an image with the wrong exposure because there isn't enough light captured. We call this an underexposed image. But by raising your ISO, your image sensor is a lot more sensitive to light, meaning that even though there might not be a lot of light altogether, your image sensor is a lot more sensitive to it, which can be seen in these images. And as mentioned before, the exposure is controlled by the three variables ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. These three variables make up what is known as the exposure triangle, also to be covered in the next few lessons. So essentially, digital photography is about finding the perfect balance between the three exposure controls, aperture, shutter, and ISO. You can always raise your ISO if needed, but you do not want to raise it too much or else your image will become noisy and have poor color reproduction. So, we have learned that ISO is a measure of how sensitive an image sensor is to light, represented by numbers, which is essential to correctly exposing an image. We have also learned that exposure is the amount of light per unit area of imaging sensor that is captured when an image is taken, controlled by ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. We've only just mentioned shutter speed and aperture. In the next few lessons, we will look at what these variables are and how they actually affect the exposure of your image. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for the rest of the lessons in this class where we focus on other fundamental aspects of digital photography.